Welcome back to the shop. Back on the 77 TA LS3 swap. Today we are wiring up the alternator, um, powering up the fuse panel, and finishing up running the power cable from the battery to the starter. So what I've done, uh, I've run the battery cable from the trunk down the frame rail and up to the starter. And what we're, we're going to do now. Uh, I bought a 10 foot section of six gauge wire down at my local auto parts store and I bought some fittings um, or cable lugs, cable ends so I can make up my own cable. I wanted a nice fat wire so we don't have any problems with resistance. So I've just gone ahead and, and uh, semi tightened this down. I put the lug on and I put some heat shriek heat shrink tube on it there <clears throat> I basically just stripped the wire uh, just enough to fit in the lug and I put it in the vise and I crimp it uh, with the corner of the vise uh, on two different sides and uh, put the heat shrink tube over it heat it up shrink it looks great holds fine so now I'm gonna just kind of measure um, I've, I've draped the wire down uh, this direction just trying to uh, find a good routing for it where it's going to be clean and out of the way and not going to chafe on anything Not going to get in burn up on the headers or any of that good stuff. So What we're going to do is we're going to raise the car up and uh, find us a path um, We also have uh, pardon all the parts laying around. We've just been kind of Him hauling around but our fuse panel is gonna gonna land here. So we're gonna run Another, you can see my battery cable here, it comes up this way, and I was trying to stay away from that header as much as possible, so I didn't want to go under it to the starter, so I decided to come up the frame rail, which we may put um, some loom on it like this, some wiring loom, uh, just to make it clean it up, so we just got it kind of temporary held in place, but I've got it looped back through the frame rail, and I do have, uh, have it in some wire loom there, so another chafing would happen. And then it kind of, you'll see when I'll raise the car up, but it kind of cleanly gives us a path to the starter. And then we'll have to do another one to power up this fuse panel here. So we, basically we're going to have alternator, six gauge from alternator to starter, six gauge from starter to fuse panel. And then we'll have to have our ignition um, wire Got to figure out which one of these activates the starter from the ignition switch from the original wiring and put it to the starter as well. We're also going to run a ground from the side of the alternator somewhere. Uh, not exactly sure where I'm going to ground that yet. I don't know if I'm going to ground it to the firewall. If I'm going to, probably not. Probably going to ground it. Um, probably just going to ground it in the inner fender well right here or something. Um, but I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that and make it look good. Um, I've got a few other grounds I've got to attach back here on the wiring harness to the back of the block. And I've got to make a ground for the battery and the... So we got a new Optima battery. Uh, if you watched in the previous videos, we've just been playing with where we're mocking this uh, battery tray up. I think that's where it's going to land right there. We've got a post here uh, going through the trunk, so my hot will go there, and then a ground will probably just um, be hidden back in the corner or something like that. Not exactly sure where I'm going to put the ground yet, but that's not a big deal. It just has to go to the body somewhere. In front of the car, let me try to light it up with a flashlight. It's a little dark in here. Um, so here's my, my alternator wiring. We've bought uh, 10 feet of this. Hopefully that'll be enough. Not, I'll be going back to the store. So it's just coming down from there. Probably just going to route it right around here, right under this motor mount, into the big post on the starter right there. Might be too bright. And I've got my battery cable. I don't have a nut for that yet. I gotta find a nut that'll fit that starter. It did not come with one. Um so I've got my 
my battery cable trying to stay away from this header I've got it running through this cross member hole in the frame and I've got some wiring conduit around it to keep it from chafing which I don't think it would anyway so I've got it routed that way um, just trying to stay away from heat hopefully uh, hopefully that'll work for us hopefully y'all can see that let's see all right, I'm having a little trouble with this lower radiator hose too. And I slipped some <laughs> some of this to protect it. I've been going down to the park store, just the, the sway bar bolt is like right into the bottom of the radiator hose. Um, it's not as bad as it looks here because this stuff is a little too big. Um, I think this is leftover duct work from the vintage air kit that I put in this car. So, I don't know, we gotta find a better, probably a better solution for this lower radiator hose. So I'm going to uh, route my cable. So I'm gonna route my cable, mark off what I need to cut off, and then uh, go ahead and give it a good crimping. I'll show you how to do that, it's pretty easy. And hopefully we will uh, get something accomplished on this thing. It's been postponed quite a bit, um, but we hadn't had any choice in that, but we're going to try to get, get uh, this thing hopefully fired up. All right, I think I'm going to route it just like that. We'll probably figure out uh, some sort of fasteners to use, utilize these oil pan bolts maybe with, and uh, route it along the pan rail straight up to the starter. So I'll mark my cable and I'll cut it off. Then I'll pull it all out and I'll crimp that other end and then I'll figure out the same thing from that post up to uh, my fuse panel up here. All right, so that's the total cable from alternator to starter and uh, it's not as long as I thought it was going to be. I thought I was not going to have enough wire when I bought the 10 feet but I, it looks like I'm going to have plenty to do those two runs from the alternator to the starter and from the starter to the fuse box so basically what I'll do is I'll just see how much I need to cut off I want to fill that up but I don't want it to, to be unshrouded I want this to be totally over even though I want to heat shrink it so really you want it to about right there some of those wires will push up into the tapered area and then, all right, so cut you some heat shrink tube go ahead and slide it down because uh, you might not be able to get it over there once you get your connector on Trim your insulation back on your wiring, duh. Slide it in the connector, and then we'll go over to the vise, and I'll show you. I just, I just put a corner of the vise on on one side and a corner on the other, and that mashes everything out good enough. You could probably get, I could probably get my wire crimper on this. I've done it in the car, but um, it's a little small for it, so I just decided to pull it out and be able to show you a little easier too. So basically, I just take the corner. I mean, you can do it in one shot probably, and all you're doing is smashing it. I mean, just want to make sure it's pushed all the way down before you start. It may, it may go in one one shot on this one. I got a lot of it in there. prettiest crimp just want to make sure I get my heat shrink tube up under there I got a little aggressive with that but I think we'll, we'll be able to do it it's gonna be a little tight I mashed the crap out of that. That's <laughs> all right, though. That's it. I mean, you can give you a pull test. I think it's not coming off of there. And I'll try to work my heat shrink up in there. 
I did uh, mash it pretty good, but then just pull my heat shrink up. You can do it long, you can do it short. It's not gonna be down there by the starter, so there's gonna be a lot of heat in that area. So I just wanted to get up there as, as much as possible on a slide. Um, slide it up over quite a bit um, just to give it a little extra insulation. You can take a cigarette lighter or mini torch or a heat gun. I prefer the heat gun um, just so it doesn't char it. Uh, use a cigarette lighter, a torch. A lot of times you'll end up with burn marks, which is fine um, if you don't care about burn marks, but I do. I'll just try to get this thing good and shrunk up. And this is the kind of heat shrink that's got the glue in it. So it will seal it off. It's like an all weather deal. So water shouldn't get in there. see that but there's glue starting to come out of the top of that I'll just give it a little squeeze don't burn yourself just to help it contour don't really like where I crimped it like that it's not my best crimp job in the world but it's gonna work for now all right we got a cable in we got this alternator wire now there is another alternator wire you've got to worry about and in this case we have the gm wiring harness computer and everything this is a, a basically a turnkey well they call it a turnkey but it's not you still have to do some wiring like you're seeing us doing now but most of the wiring like to the injectors and to the alternator it's a labeled generator um, that should excite it from the fuse panel and the computer and all that stuff's already programmed together so that should uh, be fine now there's plenty of videos out there that show you how to do this if you're doing a an ls swap where you're robbing a harness out of a tahoe or a suburban or silverado or something or whatever and uh, you're trying to um, kind of create your own wiring harness and chop one down there is some uh, resistors i believe that you've got to put in line uh, in line here to lower the voltage down on this. So I don't think we have to do that with this. I would I would assume not, since this is supposed to be a turnkey wiring harness, um, although they don't give you the setup for your, your alternator um, or your starter. So I've gotta come up with a plug for the starter, um, finish wiring this up and we should be good. So we've gotta figure out Again, what comes in the what goes from the stock wiring stuff so we can eliminate the rest of that when we don't we figure out what we don't need. All I need is, I believe all I need out of that harness is what I need to excite the starter solenoid and we should be good to go. All right. All right, so I crimped this one um, with my regular crimpers. I had to do it in both directions though. Um, but you know, just so for when the haters show up with my vice crimping, uh, I do have regular crimps too for wiring for like butt connectors and other crimping. Uh, so yeah, you can do it with like that too. If you don't want to put it in a vice and mash it all the way flat like I did the other ones, and this seems to be good and tight too. So two ways to do it. All right, so we got we got our alternator wire. From the alternator to the starter, we got the starter wire, uh, our power wire for the fuse box wired up. We don't have them loomed up or uh, tidied, but we got that one from the alternator, one from the battery to the starter, and the one from the starter, which kind of is going to go up this route. And it's going to get cleaned up, loomed up, and uh, secured down. And that's it.
that's gonna wrap up this one i gotta get back in a dump truck in the morning and uh they will jump back on this in a couple days try to get that uh, trunk secured we'll have and get my wire over to the starter i got a little uh wiring connector ordered for that starter it's got a one wire deal going into the starter solenoid uh for for the signal wire so i gotta figure out my signal wire uh after we mount the battery which shouldn't take long and uh all right just trying to close this thing out so we're gonna do the signal wire for that and uh for the starter finish the trunk up, run our grounds, and uh, then we'll we'll be able to move on after that. We'll, we'll move into um, wiring up the controller for the 4L80E that we put in. We got tons of video on all this stuff, guys. Uh, this car has just got video and video and video, uh, one after the other for the last few years. Um, so we've done quite a lot of little projects on this thing. So if you, you know, wanna go check those out, they're in the playlist under the LS3 Swap Trans Am. Uh, there's vintage air stuff. Uh, there's there's uh, fuel system stuff, uh, flywheel stuff. There's stuff on putting um, Ultra Bell on a Turbo 350 for this thing that we were going to use, but ended up not being able to. All right, so uh, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Hit that uh, like and subscribe button, and uh, check out my other videos. Peace.